no, I'm not being pulled over. I'm in front of like this little convenience store and they're little, they have like little LED lights in the front. And I'm about to go in and get me a soda. But um, I just wanted to come on real quick. Um, this lighting actually isn't bad. This is the mean friend. You know, that one friend that everybody has that everybody calls mean when in actuality, they're just advocating for you all the time. I'm that mean friend. Um, and I'm about to say something really mean. I know that there are a lot of women for various reasons who cannot leave their abusive or maybe they're not necessarily abusive, but their partner is just fucking toxic or just passive or just lazy and not proactive. And um, it could be financial reasons. It could be fear of the unknown. It could be, you know, maybe you're in a really dangerous situation and you're afraid that your partner is going to seek you out and cause harm to you or your children. And before I continue on with what I'm saying, I want you to know because somebody's going to so say, you don't know what it's like. I left my abusive ex-husband in 2008 with two kids and a duffel bag and no money and stayed in a women's shelter. And from there, I rebuilt my life. So yeah, I know what I'm talking about. You're still sitting there thinking, should I leave? Or should I stay? And there's days when you might vent to your friends and you're frustrated and he's an asshole one day. And then the next week he's nice to you when you're in love and you're thinking that there's a possibility that things could actually get better. And then the cycle just kind of repeats itself. And then you start back at square one with you don't know if you should leave or not and you're afraid and you don't want to be single and you don't have a lot of money. You don't know how you're going to rebuild your life. I'm going to say something that's very true and very real. And I have heard this from numerous adults of children who had moms who were being abused by their fathers and they stayed. A lot of those children no longer speak to their mom. And here's why. We're often fed this idea that in abusive relationships, there's the abusive parent. Some, I know some parents, some parent, both parents can be worse, you know, bad for some people. I get that, but I'm not talking about that dynamic right now. Hold your comments. I'm not talking about you. But in the dynamic where there's one abusive parent and one parent that's not abusive, we think that is the good parent, but it is not the good parent. <gasps> How dare you say that? Hold on. Instead of getting defensive, I need you to listen to me. And I've already acknowledged all the obstacles of why you can't leave right away. And I heard another woman say this um, several months ago. I don't remember what her name was to tag her. But she spent a lot of years thinking that her dad was the abusive parent and her mom was the nice parent. Because when her dad would abuse her, she would go and cry to her mom. And her mom would comfort her. And it took her years to realize that her mom was also an abusive parent too. Why? Because she allowed her to be abused by her father. She allowed her to witness herself being abused. So now as an adult, she no longer talks to her father. And she no longer talks to her mother. These stories are just a whole nother reason as to why I'm so passionate about women decentering men. Because the consequence of you not doing that could be your child never speaking to you again. Because our kids cannot pack up a suitcase and go out into the world and build a life at six years old or younger or 10 years old or even 16. I mean, I've heard of some 16 year olds who left and you know, really had to struggle to make it. But it's up to us to protect them. So even if you don't wanna leave, think about your kids and what that's doing to them, okay? There is no good parent in a situation where a child is being abused. I'm sorry, I know this is controversial. You guys are gonna rip me a new asshole. I know it. But the reason I left my abusive ex-husband, I can tell you right now what my thought process was. I did not want my kids witnessing that shit. Full stop. I didn't want them witnessing that. And it happened once 
where they witnessed it because he, you know, the, the moment he attacked me, they just so happened to be there. And I've shared that story several times. And I was like, nope, done. Never again. I don't care what the fuck I got to do. I figured it out and I went to a women's shelter and I rebuilt my life because I was not going to have them live in that kind of environment. So even if you are scared that you're going to be single for the rest of all, you know, all the fears, I've experienced all of them. You're not going to sit here and tell me nothing I ain't, I ain't been through already, okay? You're preaching to the choir here. You must be new here if you don't know that I already know these things. But if you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for your children. Because if you don't, if your abuser isn't already abusing them, they will and their ch your child is either going to wind up being an abuser or being abused or never talking to you or all of those things at one point. So if you don't care about yourself, care about your children, please.